Hey guys, this is Toro. Today we're going to be talking about my 2022 predictions as to what is going to be coming to Marvel Strike Force character-wise. I'm only really doing characters here. There's obviously going to be costumes. There's going to be new game modes and stuff. The new game mode, the uh, Grand Arena, I assume that's going to be coming in the first patch of 2022. However, it could be any time, realistically. We don't know entirely when these things are going to be happening. Um, I'm hoping that we start getting like a quarterly kind of update rather than this current kind of half yearly one. I do think that a quarterly works a lot better, uh, similar to what Star Wars Galaxy Heroes does with their road ahead. So I'll try and give reasoning behind each of the characters and why I think they're going to be coming. Most are based on patterns or uh, some kind of reasoning. And most characters are characters we've heard about, whether through rumors or through uh, surveys they've sent out or other things. Now it's possible that all of these come true or possible that none come true. And I'm not responsible if you didn't wear your white pants. And I have no idea uh, when half the shows next year are going to be coming. They haven't officially announced when they are. They officially like wait until like the last kind of two months before it, if that, to kind of announce when the new shows are coming like miss marvel it says summer 2022 and all the rest of them just say 2022 and that's really it so some takeaways from 2021 tie-ins can be as simple as a new costume or just one character or as advanced as a full team like the secret avengers uh, obviously secret avengers ended up coming later not even to tie in with their team um, but we did get like baron zemo to be able to tie into falcon and winter soldier to begin with for loki all we got was the loki president costume um and for Hawkeye so far, all we've got is the Hawkeye costume. Uh, it, and even for like Venom too, we only got the Venom costume for Halloween and that was really it. TV specifically don't really get many tie-ins or their tie-ins come later is what we've kind of, what I've seen at least. Like typically TV series so far have just kind of had a costume and that's it. Some other info, now just because I like making positive videos some kind, including this one, doesn't mean I'm happy with the current state of the game, doesn't mean I'm not still frustrated, doesn't mean I'm still spending or anything like that. I just try to be positive sometimes for my own mental health. Like, you guys know I've talked about it before, I have depression, I have anxiety. Um, so sometimes just making positive videos just makes me feel a bit better. Uh, and a huge shout out to Mac Italy and Gambot. Without Mac, Gambot wouldn't exist. And Gambot's your central place for all your tier fours, all your uh, ISO information, everything like that. Make sure you head onto my Discord and you'll be able to see it. And this video is sponsored by Dragon Champions, so check that out down in the description. Hey guys, this video is sponsored by Dragon Champions. If you love the look of classic RPGs like Warcraft and enjoy squad fighter games like Star Wars Galaxy Heroes or Marvel Strike Force, this game is for you. The developers have poured their heart out to create a fantastic game with an interesting, engaging story, energetic and fun dialogue, and Easter eggs and references to all your favorite fantasy worlds. And best of all, they communicate with their community. With more than 60 heroes from the wild tribal orcs to the calm Zen pandas, there's a faction that everyone can enjoy in the united fight against evil the game is completely free to play and you can do everything without spending but if you do want to spend there are some amazing deals with some great value my favorite thing is just the variety of balanced content available you've got the expeditions where you can send your troops out to get resources back for you to be able to use the tower that you can climb and challenge your roster and even the tournaments where you're going to compete against people on your level for character shards now, the great thing is that developers are currently giving you an awesome starter pack if you are below level 15. Head on down to the settings and use the promo code TORNA. And that's going to get you 250,000 gold, 500 Draco coins, 500 energy, and a whole new hero, Corcoran. Not only that, but it supports my channel. So what are you waiting for? Head on down to the description and click the links to download the game and start kicking some ass. Good luck and see you there. All right, so back. So in February, I'm predicting we're going to be getting Excalibur, Gambit, Rogue, Nightcrawler. We've had rumors of all three of these characters for a while. We know that Nightcrawler is Cerebro's like favorite character, or at least one of his favorite characters. Gambit and Rogue are characters they've been talking about for ages. Uh, we know that Psylocke is also being kicked off of uh, the Uncanny team, and the Uncanny team kind of is in this spot where they don't really have anyone currently. Um, 
like anyone that's going to be going to be moving out of the team uh for what we've seen magic ties in both with storm and with cyclops cyclops ties in with phoenix phoenix ties in with colossus all of them kind of work well together star looks like the odd girl out now and kind of it's being kicked off that team for the record we have betsy in game i double checked it is betsy um and she is currently like she, originally she was tied into like the limbo stuff in her storyline they talked about limbo and everything and with magic obviously coming to the game that's Ma uh, more stuff to do with limbo so who knows uh most likely if she is excalibur then she would have like some kind of empowerment into captain britain who obviously is the main character of that um ca uh, of the uh, excalibur team typically like captain britain's kind of front and fore center and psylocke is currently the front and fore center of the current excalibur run and then in March, we get the Legendary for that. So I think they're going to kind of space this out, have the Legendary come a little bit later. So that way they can use like some of like the Spiders as the Legendary unlock for them. Then we've got the West Coast Avengers. They've kind of hint been hinting towards Scarlet Witch and Vision getting a rework here. They've hinted towards West Coast Avengers a little bit before as well. And then having Mockingbird coming to the game. Mockingbird and Hawkeye actually have a pretty in-depth history. They were married for a while and everything. Uh, Wonder Man as well coming would be tying into having Rogue rogue as well rogue currently has wonder man's powers and then inhuman so this one looks like from what i'm guessing they'll probably do like a pretty loaded patch around here and then they'll have like um the oh, what are these called uh the grand arena probably here as well and then more inhumans with medusa and gorgon because the inhuman team is kind of a little bit kind of left behind currently all right so then in april so uh, that would be when you've got the Doctor, Ver, uh, Doctor Strange movie going to be coming out in May. You've got the Year of Vengeance going to be taking place around that April, May kind of area. And Midnight Suns obviously coming in th at the end of the year. So they can start doing like Midnight Suns kind of stuff. And I do think they will be allowed to create an OG character again. Kind of like when they did Deathpool. This is kind of like how they did the Deadpool year and everything. Uh, having Deathpool being a character. Having like their own kind of version of of a character with the spirit of vengeance in it i think would be amazing morbius obviously movie is coming out in january so wouldn't surprise me if we do get morbius next year as well and dr strange and ghost rider dr strange probably getting a costume to tie into multiverse of madness and then ghost rider uh, obviously because of the year of vengeance and everything then they could have kind of two ghost riders on that team uh, i think there's been two ghost riders on the midnight suns at least by now there's been um the original one and then there was danny kench i think was a catch was on the go uh the midnight suns at some point as well then in June, we've got Miss Marvel coming out, but I don't think they're going to kind of tie into Miss Marvel too much besides reworking her. I think instead what we'll get is like the Pride Month, a big Pride Month event with Wiccan and Hulkling both coming out. And then they can have Kate Bishop as well. And then Kate Bishop can kind of tie into um, obviously the Hawkeye TV show that we've got going on at the moment, but kind of like, like, kind of like how we end up getting the secret avengers a little bit later on having kate kind of come there and they can kind of tweak her kid a little bit to match her in uh in the movie uh in the tv show then july is when all uh we've got the thor now i don't think i think that like this year has kind of shown that they like to do kind of like two different teams at once sometimes um they kind of do a little bit here a little bit there whenever they kind of want to so july having like a couple as guardians coming with thor jane and then valkyrie that kind of frees up hella and frees up loki to be able to move on to different teams later on and makes like a hero as guardian kind of team there thor jane is obviously meant to be one of the main characters in thor love and thunder as well as valkyrie so having those kind of being predictions to come to the game is pretty easy uh, and then hellions being like a rework between emma and sinister kind of combining the hellfire club and combining um combining hellfire club and hellions to come together with emma and sinister from the hellions and then sebastian shaw and emma from um the the hellfire club and then sunfire is i think he was hellfire club as well is it the hellfire club or hellions i can't remember which one at the, top, at the moment off the top of my head then August, we've got She-Hulk. Again, they're kind of like, combo like releasing a team around it, but it's not kind of based on what's in the show. We know that Abomination is in the show. We know Hulk is in the show. And we know She-Hulk is in the show. All of these have been announced ages ago. No, I'm not spoiling things because they've been announced ages ago. I know that I typically sometimes spoil things. However, they've been announced for ages and ages. Um, 
Red Hulk, obviously, we've kind of had a few hints in the MCU working to kind of work, working towards Red Hulk with Thaddeus Ross being sick already in the MCU at the end of uh, Black Widow, which came out ages ago again. Um, Abomination, obviously, was also in Shang-Chi and Harpy there. Um, Harpy being, uh, obviously, uh, Thaddeus Ross's daughter and the love interest of Hulk for a while. They've hinted at all these guys kind of in the backgrounds of the of the uh, the comics in Cerebro's videos at some point as well. In September, we've got Spidey 29, uh, sorry, Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse 2 uh, coming out in October. And then we've got Moon Knight as well coming out probably around sometime around here, I'd say. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do here. I think they'll just do a Moon Knight costume because currently there is not much known about Moon Knight. Like so far, they're kind of really keeping things under wraps. It's not as kind of announced as She-Hulk is. Uh, they've kind of shown Moon Knight and that's really it. Um, now, Spideys, obviously we've got a few different characters that have been a part of the Web Warriors and everything. It wouldn't surprise me if Web Warriors becomes a bigger team, kind of like the Uncanny X-Men. Um, where you can kind of pick and choose different characters based on where they're going, especially given the rumors that that team was going to be a bio raid team, having more characters come later on that kind of extends it into war or somewhere else wouldn't surprise me. Agent Venom obviously could come to either work alongside those web warriors or work alongside the symbiotes, depending on what you kind of want in your game. You've got November. Now, I don't know what's going to happen here. November is kind of difficult because uh, you've got Black Widow, Wakanda forever, but not much has really been announced about that either. We don't know what's happening, um, obviously, because of uh, Chadwick Boseman's passing away and everything. We don't really know what's going on with that show. There's been rumors that Namor's going to be in it. There's been rumors that a whole lot of different things are happening. However, we don't really know what's going on with it. Um, so I don't know what they're going to do there. Maybe just like a... Uh, a, a costume for Black Panther or something. I don't think they're going to do like a Wakanda rework as much as I wish they would, because what if season two is meant to be coming out as well? And obviously that's already got T'Challa, T'Challa coming to the game next patch. So I don't know is the thing. Like, I, I have no idea. As for the Guardians of the Multiverse, I do think the Legendary will come from that team. I think that they kind of, they've kind of looked at the Doctor Strange from that and be like, there are so many aspects of this character that we can turn into a Legendary that I think that he would definitely suit a Legendary. Now, keep in mind that this means that we would not be getting all of the Horseman Legendaries, as the rumors have kind of suggested, in a row. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do want to kind of break that up over two years uh, and then eventually do a big kind of rework to Omega Red to bring him back into the meta. Keep in mind that while um, everyone's complaining about meta 2.0, including myself, as to how fast characters have kind of ramped up, meta 1.0 lasted forever. Like, that was like two, three years or something of meta 1.0. So, I don't suspect characters from this year, for example, Omega Red, will be power crept incredibly fast. I mean, we're still using Phoenix in Dark Dimension. She's still insanely strong there. She's getting a buff as well next patch, so who knows. Uh, Captain Carter, Iron Man Sakaar is meant to be a characters featuring in What If Season 2 was meant to be in Season 1, and they've also talked previously about wanting to add a uh, Hulkbuster into the game, so I am uh, sorry about my son in the background, he's just got asthma so he's coughing his guts up um, Iron Man Sakaar as kind of like a character there, uh, definitely kind of makes sense, it allows them to bring in a Hulkbuster while also being able to be a tie into What If, and then Kill Col uh, King Killmonger, obviously Killmonger is in uh, What If Season um season one he's got like the full outfit and everything like that the classic kind of black panther black and gold outfit that he uh has been kind of featured in a lot and he, he ends up with that suit in what if so i wouldn't be surprised if they want to add him in there as like a different version of killmonger and then finally december december is a hard one because there's the guardians of the galaxy holiday special but for that i don't think they're going to do as much i think that's going to get like a costume or something like Santa Star Lord or something along those lines. I don't know. A, a Groot Christmas tree. Groot Christmas tree, I think, would be an amazing one. I, I would definitely think that people would probably wail on that. Um, but there's also Secret Invasion, which is meant to be coming out. Secret Invasion is difficult. It's obviously featuring Fury. Um, 
as one of the main characters and Talos is meant to be in there as well. What I think they're going to go with this direction is Sword. Sword, obviously in the comics, is kind of like the, the shield of space. And in the MCU, it's kind of similar to that. So this way they can kind of rework Fury and rework Kestrel to be a members of Sword. Um, just given the fact that they're kind of basically been members of S.W.O.R.D. in the past, like Strike is very similar to S.W.O.R.D. Maybe it's just a Strike team. Maybe they just call it Strike or something. And these guys could be like the original founders of Strike. They've hinted at Blue Marvel previously being a member of this and being a, one of the founders of Strike and working alongside uh, Agent... Uh, Agent Kestrel, I was going to say. Uh, it looks like Kestrel. And then we could finally have, like, Havoc or something bring X-Factor, buff X up X-Factor into... Um up into like the current meta and then finally like a TVA slash Loki team with Sylvian classic Loki it kind of gets difficult like towards the end like the first ones I can get kind of semi-confident about but then towards the end especially because of the not knowing where the TV shows are it kind of gets hard to judge where things are going to end up and where I'm um, sorry I'm trying not to cough uh where things are going to kind of place in the MCU and where things are going to place in the timeline for uh, for Strike Force. I assume there's going to be more difficult for Strike Force given the fact that things are just so up in air. That's why typically a lot of these are kind of more focused towards the um towards like general teams like the She-Hulk teams not going to really tie into She-Hulk as much besides maybe like a costume for She-Hulk or something either with this, with this team or later on or something like that um, but I'd love to hear from you guys what your predictions on 2022 are try and keep it positive I know that it's kind of difficult for a lot of us at the time um, but like I'll, I like to kind of talking positive every once in a while um, just to kind of I don't know keep my own morale up um, but that's it for today guys have a great day and goodbye